When it comes to myths, The Legend of Zelda is the series that keeps on giving. Ocarina of Time might have the lion's share of the more popular mysteries, but this time, we're going back to the series' roots. The original NES classic is known for many things, like its use of battery back saving and non-linear dungeon progression, but its lore is also a hot topic. No, we're not talking about the chronology of the series. Rather, it's the brief bits of in-game dialogue, courtesy of the various NPCs scattered about Hyrule that's of interest. These famous cryptic sayings have spawned numerous internet memes and are an undeniable part of our gaming culture. The often odd wording of these phrases is usually attributed to the localization, and though some were understandable enough, a few took some thought to decipher. Here are some notable quotes from the game. There are secrets where fairies don't live is a reference to the entrance of level 7. Did you get the sword from the old man on top of the waterfall indicates where you'll find the white sword. Aim at the eyes of Goma is a clue to defeating the boss. Walk into the waterfall sets you on the path to discovering level 5's location. Spectacle Rock is an entrance to death, reveals the location of level 9. While almost all of these quotes have a clear explanation, there's still one that's proven persistently confounding. A remark from the old man in level 8, which states simply, 10th enemy has the bomb. Naturally, most wrote this line off as a poor translation. A quick look at the differences between the Japanese and English versions of the game, courtesy of a fan translation guide, further supports this theory. In the Japanese version of the game, the line actually reads, Search for the Lion Key, a reference to the magical key found within level 8. The reinforced assumption is that the English translation was simply a case of careless localization. However, we were recently approached by a user on our forum going by the alias Greenest, who had another theory. Supposedly, the quote is a reference to an actual in-game mechanic, and not simply a mistranslation. Greenest presented us with a set of simple instructions to follow. In The Legend of Zelda, make sure you have at least one bomb in your inventory, and then kill nine enemies in a row without getting hit. Then use a bomb to kill the tenth enemy. If you did this correctly, in other words, without getting hit, then the 10th enemy will drop bombs. After obtaining some bombs, we were able to kill 9 enemies in a row without taking damage. When the smoke cleared after vanquishing the 10th foe, we were surprised to see the spoils of our victory, a set of bombs. However, the process didn't work when repeated on another 10 kills. Instead, we had to take damage from an enemy before the trick would work again. We were curious as to how this was discovered, so we decided to look into the matter. That's when we came across a tool-assisted speedrun from 2008 created by Baxter and Morrison. The description for the video contained a chart and explanation outlining how item drops worked in The Legend of Zelda. We then reached out to Baxter to get some more insight into his findings. According to Baxter, there's a set algorithm governing the way enemies drop items in the game. He stated that, in the game, there are two memory addresses in the code for enemy kills. One designated 0050 counts the number of enemies killed since you were last hit. The other designated 052A just counts the number of enemies killed. First, if you happen to know what the value of 052A was at the given moment, you could accurately predict what items would drop from each subsequent enemy. For example, if you killed an enemy in Group B and a clock dropped, then if you immediately killed another enemy from Group B, a single rupee would drop. There's an exception. Evidently, the frame that you kill an enemy on determines whether or not an item drops, so it's possible some enemies won't drop an item at all. As to how exactly the frame data factors into item drops, none of our sources have as of yet cracked the code. With this new knowledge in hand, we return to Hyrule. It took some time to set up the proper conditions, but eventually we noticed the item drops from enemies matched up with the chart drawn by Baxter and Morrison, culminating with a bomb drop on the 10th enemy. Enemies didn't always drop items, but the ones that did drop items that were consistent with the chart and Baxter's explanation.
Baxter went on to explain how he came across these findings. In order to optimize the tool-assisted speedrun he and Morrison worked on, it was necessary to know when it was possible to count on getting health or bombs from item drops. With this information, it would be possible to know how many damage boosts could be taken and how many bombs used. He began by using a RAM watcher to see what RAM addresses changed when an enemy was killed. A few addresses appeared to count the number of enemies killed, which would become crucial later on but at the time, Baxter was unaware of their importance. The next step was to kill a single enemy, a red Octorok, multiple times by using the re-records on an emulator. What was interesting was that whenever that enemy dropped an item, it was always the same thing. From there, Baxter tried killing different red Octoroks in succession using re-records to ensure every enemy dropped an item and took note of what enemies dropped what items. When he had compiled a long enough list, Baxter tried to find a pattern. At first, it appeared completely random, but eventually he noticed that roughly the same sequence of items was dropped for every 10 enemies. This allowed him to conclude that RAM address 052A was the key, since it counted the number of enemies killed from 0 to 9, and then flipped back to 0 again. After writing down the type of item dropped for each value of 052A for red Octorox, he did the same for blue Octorox. He continued doing this for all types of enemies, and eventually figured out all item-dropping enemies fell into one of four different groups. What made finding the pattern particularly difficult was that the sequence Baxter observed wasn't perfect, as some item drops didn't make sense. This is where a second RAM address for counting enemy kills, 0050, came into play. This address counted the number of enemies killed, but went down to zero when you got hit. When it reaches a high enough value, it'll flip back to zero, and the enemy killed will give you a bomb, a blue rupee, or a fairy. The value of 0050 overwrote whatever item 052A predicted, explaining the inconsistencies in his earlier findings. However, we were left wondering why using a bomb to kill a 10th consecutive enemy without taking damage yielded a bomb drop. That's when we turn to a speedrunner named Darkwing Duck to shed some more light on the mystery. Darkwing Duck states that upon the 10th consecutive kill without getting hit, a blue rupee normally drops. That is unless you kill the 10th enemy with a bomb, which will instead yield a bomb drop. If the 10th enemy killed is a non-item dropping enemy, the expected drop is rolled over to the next item dropping enemy you kill, provided you don't take a hit before doing. If you're hit, the consecutive hit counter, the value of 0050, resets and you have to start again. From there, the 16th consecutive kill yields a fairy drop, but only on item dropping enemies. After the 16th consecutive kill, every 10th consecutive kill afterward yields a bomb or blue rupee. However, if the 16th consecutive kill is a non-item dropping enemy, then the fairy drop is skipped. Instead, the 20th consecutive kill will drop the same sort of item as the 10th, as will every 10th consecutive kill thereafter. Darkwing Duck added that there are some oddities that occur with a consecutive counter. Item-carrying enemies, like a key-carrying Stalfos, appear to throw the counter for a loop in a way that's not fully understood yet. Striking non-traditional targets, like the old man in a dungeon, counts towards the consecutive kill counter, too. There are also kills that count toward the consecutive kill counter that don't count toward the regular kill counter. Gels and keys spawned from Zoles and Vires do not count toward the kill counter, but they count toward the consecutive kill counter. Yet the strike that breaks apart a Zol or Vire doesn't seem to affect either counter, though the validity of this is still debated. Both Baxter and Darkwing Duck acknowledge the information regarding consecutive enemy kills could very well be related to the 10th enemy has a bomb quote. The first time 0050 flips back to zero is after killing 10 enemies without getting hit. The chances of you getting a bomb increase significantly, and even enemies like Red Octorox that would normally never drop a bomb can provide you with some explosive loot. Given everything outlined, it appears that the cryptic message in level 8 actually holds some truth. Nintendo was unable to comment, which is no surprise since whoever worked on the localization of the game most likely has long since moved on. However, somebody recently posted images of a Nintendo Power Hotline counselor's binder, and some of the pages covered The Legend of Zelda. Within these pages were direct references to the cryptic in-game quotes and their actual meanings. This suggests rather strongly that Nintendo was perhaps more mindful of the content of these cryptic lines than we previously thought. The recently released English edition of Hyrule Historia, however, provides more conclusive evidence. There are a few pages in the book dedicated to cataloging the original Zelda's development. Among the documents reproduced is a specific page that outlines the mechanics of item drops, and the diagrams depicted look a good deal like the chart that Baxter and Morrison came up with. The staff at Nintendo of America must have had access to this documentation as well and worked it into the game in the form of the quote, 10th enemy has the bomb, a cryptic clue that took the combined efforts of the Zelda community 
nearly two decades to decipher.